So watch it. Here it comes. Look how slow. Look at that drip out. Look at it. It's like it looks like syrup. Does that look like syrup? It's like amazing. See? See that color? Nice and blue. Had a phone call. Sorry. I don't know how to turn that off. This smells so awesome. In fact, I think that this is what is in the Australian blue. This is the main thing in the Australian blue that I really love. Oh, it smells so good. So it's really, really thick, which means it's very viscous. It's very heavy. It's one of the heavier oils. It helps other oils to stick around longer. So it's like a fixident. Then that would be like what other oil? Let's see if you guys can see. I can't see that small. Okay. So if what other oil is really, really thick like that, that you would find like in a perfume to make others last longer? I'm seeing, I, I probably look like an old lady going, oh, I can't see what you're saying. Is anybody answering me? Who knows? This isn't the question that you get to win anything on, by the way. Vetiver is very thick, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. I was thinking of myrrh and how myrrh is used to make other oils stick around longer. And it's very um, good for the skin, the same as this blue cypress is really good for the skin. So what's the first thing you do when you get a new to you oil? Duh, you open it up and smell it. So one of the things that um, I've heard Deborah Rayburn talk about and when you get a new oil is to hold it down at your waist height and just let the aroma come up to your nose. Lift it a little higher and let the aroma come up. And as you're breathing it, and if you do this slowly, then your body has time to adjust to it and to more like memorize more of its smell and then you bring it up closer and smell with one side she even says close one side and then close the other side and smell and if you do that it helps to like imprint the oil and so you'll know when you need it has more it knows more what to do when it goes into your body so what did the people do before they had the, thir the third party resources? They just asked the oils. They just used the oils. They let the oils do what the oils needed to do. They didn't have any um, resources to tell them what to do. If you looked at that book that I had last night, one of the very first ones that Gary wrote, the Essent Aromatherapy, The Essential Beginning, and you look in here, this is like the pre to the EODR. This is like the pre-desk reference. And it's got a lot of information in here that about um, each oil and some of the old products that Young Living used to have, like way back in the early days. But we don't have to rely only on that because we do have the desk reference. And I've got the sixth edition desk reference and I feel like if you guys have seen the seventh it does have more oils but it does not have let me that's in my way there but it does not have the same amount of information for instance when I looked up blue cypress in the EODR in the sixth edition it told me which blends it was in when I looked it up in the seventh edition it did not have that information so it, it, even though it has more oils, it has less information on the oils that it does have. So I really don't let don't let go of your older um, volume EODRs. As a matter of fact, if you can get your hands on the older older ones, they have even different and more um, protocols on issues that you don't see expounded upon now. So smelling this oil <clears throat> smells delicious. So I looked it up in the EODR and I found out it's from Australia and I looked at which parts of the plant it uses. I looked at they used it for 
perfume in ancient times and they used to use it for um, skin and they used it for embalming. So if you think about those things, like why would they why would they choose certain oils for those different things? Well, it smells good, it's why it goes in perfume. It also makes others hang around longer so you get a longer half-life if you add it to the thinner oils and if they use it for embalming. Now think about the people that are doing embalming. What kind of protection or such would they need? So we're not even gonna say what that is, but you can pretty much guess. And then if you look at the different oil blends that it's used in, you can also get a cue or a clue as to what different things that you can use it for. So one of the ones, Breathe Again, which is the oil that I'm gonna give away after I see your answers to the question. And now you know I'm gonna ask a question about the blue cypress. So has everybody like done a lot of reading on it? How many of you have looked it up in your EODR? There's a few of you on here. Let's see if any of you have looked it up. Give me a thumbs up or something. Nobody? Okay, well, then when you get off of here, go and look it up and see what else it says about it. You can find the other uses, which you'll see why it's useful in embalming if you look in your EODR. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the question and then you're gonna have three minutes to answer the question on a thread that I will start as soon as I get off of here. Okay, so Kidder, you Kidder, you know the answer, so you can't you can't participate. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's like, oh man, that's not fair. I know you're thinking that, but you and I just talked about this, so I already told you the answer, so you don't get to participate. But everybody else can. Here's the question. On that newsletter that I put out, what information on there was brand new? In other words, you can't find it in a resource. Okay, got that? What information is brand new, or you won't find it, even though I noted it, you won't find it if you go to look for it? Okay, so that's what I want you to answer. Now I'm gonna close off this live and I'm gonna go type out where I want you to put the answer and then we will see who wins in three minutes. Bye.